And from Kaizen Sports, thank you for joining us for another virtual PE lesson. This lesson is aimed at early stage foundation years and key stage one. And we're going to be looking at different striking games that we can be playing, drawing similarities across six different sports. You just need a couple of things to play this game. You need a drink of water because it will be quite warm. It's not essential, but if you have a drink, that's good. But the essentials, the things that you have to have, are a couple of pieces of scrunched up paper if you're playing at school. If you're playing at home, as always, you can join us with your rolled up socks. They're a little bit softer, so hopefully things at home won't get broken. A real quick disclaimer, obviously when you're playing these games, make sure you're using them in a, playing them in a safe space. And if you're at home or in the classroom, it's ideal if you have somebody supervising you as well. So that said, grab yourself some scrunched up pieces of paper, a couple of socks, and we'll make a start. I'll give you one minute to do that and then we'll rock and roll. If you've joined us, just joined us just now, welcome. We're going to be doing a range of different activities aimed at foundation phase early years and key stage one. And we're going to be predominantly looking at striking games across six different sports. It's going to be good. It's Monday. Hopefully a lot of you have had your lunch and you're ready to rock and roll. Hope you've all had good weekends as well. It seems to fly by really quickly. Right, let's make a start. So the first activity we're going to look at is striking the ball within tennis. So here's what I'd like you to do. Pair up with a partner. If you haven't got a partner or you're playing the game on your own, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to show you the two variations. Firstly, if you're playing on your own, which is what I'm going to be doing, and then I'm going to show you another ver version using a partner. So the version on your own, it's a striking game, it's really simple. All you need is a wall to be able to use. See, I've got my wall just here. And all I'm going to be able to do is demonstrate a tennis serve. So I'm going to stand 45 degrees onto the wall, not facing it, not sideways, but kind of half and half. I'm half facing it, half facing away. I'm going to have my striking hand, the one that I'm going to imagine is a tennis racket, and I'm going to hold that just behind my ear. And the other ball, I'm going to throw up in front of me, just like we've done in throwing in other weeks. I'll do it in black so it's a bit easier to see, just in front of us. So all you're going to do is throw, and as it starts coming back down, you're going to move your hand forward to strike the ball, against the wall. If it comes back and you can catch it, that's great, but this isn't a catching session, so don't worry about it if you can't catch it. The main focus is on the throwing and the tennis serve hitting it against the wall. That's how you play it on your own. If you've got a partner, all you're going to do is again, throw the ball up to yourself, hit the ball so that your partner can catch it. Your partner's then going to serve it up and hit it back to you. So you're taking it in turns and the aim of the game is to build up a rally to make as many consecutive hits and catches as you can. So we're just gonna spend about three minutes on this. Hopefully the teachers and parents at home can help facilitate, and off you go. So we throw the ball nice and high up in front of us, and we push it forward so it hits the wall. If you can catch it, it's a bonus. If you can't catch it, don't worry about it. So hand behind the ear, throwing up, and then hitting against the wall. And that's going to be our tennis throw. Again, if you're playing the game with your partner, you can do that. You're going to throw it, hit it, and this time you're going to strike it to your partner. You're not going to strike it at your partner. You're going to strike it to your partner so that they can catch. It's going to be quite difficult, but we'll give it a go. As always, when you get the opportunity, make sure that you practice on both hands. So here I'm throwing up with my right, hitting with my left and hopefully trying to catch. You'll notice that if you've got a scrunched up piece of paper, you can certainly hit it with a lot more power. It bounces back, but it, because it's not quite circular, it may bounce to the left, to the right, slightly up or slightly down, which is gonna make it much harder to catch. Luckily for us, we're not too fussed about the catching. We're more interested in the striking. So again, ball in front of us, hand slightly behind our ear, throw up, and then we push through, almost like we're swatting a fly out of the air. 
We're gonna do this for one more minute and then we'll move on to our next exercise. If you want to add in more power, you can twist your body as well. We've spoken about that in previous weeks. So I can either hit like that or I can turn my hips. So now when the ball's up in the air and I turn my hips, naturally my arm will start coming around anyway. And that gives me even more power than when I move through with my hand. If the ball hits the floor, it's absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about. Things will go a little bit wrong. And that's what learning is. Making mistakes, like that one, and learning from it anyway. Last 30 seconds. Again, if you've got a partner, that's fantastic. If you haven't got a partner, don't worry about it. You can do it just like I am, playing on your own against a wall. Throw it up and then a hit. Last 10 seconds. It's like swatting a fly out of the air. Fantastic, that's done, well done everybody. Which means we can tick off our first activity. Tennis is done. The next activity we're gonna look at is a little bit more difficult. We're going to look at doing volleyball. So with volleyball, that's the sport where you have six people on each team. You've got a big net that's very, very high. And the aim is to use parts of your arm and your hands to hit the ball over the net. It's a little bit like tennis, but there's lots of people on each side. This time when we do the activity, we're going to aim to hit the ball using your forearm. And the forearm is the bit between your elbow and your wrist. If you're struggling and it's a little bit too difficult, you can hit the ball with your hand as well. So as before, I'm gonna show you how to play it with one player and with two players. With one player, I'm gonna find a bit of the wall and all I'm going to do is throw the ball to myself. And when I hit it, I'm going to use a scooping action. I'm going to bend my knees, I'm going to straighten my arms and then move them forward as I straighten my legs. Just like that and hopefully, that should push the ball back against the wall. Oops, make sure the throw's good. And then hit it against the wall and back. As before, if you're playing with a partner, the aim of the game is to play the ball so that it goes to your partner so that they can catch it. And when they do, they're going to throw the ball and serve it back to their teammate. See how many you can get in a row. We're gonna play for three minutes. Off we go. Some of these moves are quite tricky. The design to be, we're not gonna get it right straight away. It does take a lot of practice to be able to do these movements. And that's what we're at school to do. We're here to practice and to get better. We've mentioned in previous weeks, if something goes right, that's great because our, learn brims, our brain learns from it and we start doing it more and more. If something goes wrong, it just means that our brain doesn't do that thing next time. It'll do something very, very slightly different. So slight, sometimes you can't even notice it. It feels like you're doing the same thing, but you're not. It will be slightly different as your brain tries to work out what success is. So if it goes right or it goes wrong, it doesn't really matter. Your brain learns each time. The only difference is, if you do it right, it feels better. It doesn't really matter. It's still to do with learning. It just feels a little bit better in the moment. To get more power on the shot, you can bend your knees further. So as you straighten your hands, as you straighten your legs, sorry, you can see straight away your arms move up a lot more. Because your arms are moving faster, you're able to get more strength on the ball. If you've got a partner and you're doing your rallies, it'll be interesting to see how many you've got so far. Some of you might just have one or two. Some of you might have 10 or 20 in your rally so far. I find it quite difficult using my forearms, so just for now I'm just using my hands just to move the ball. We're gonna carry on for another minute. I'm just going to talk through a few bits and pieces. So obviously this sport isn't exactly volleyball, but that's not the idea. The idea here is the transfer of learning. So we're going to try one thing 
and then we're going to use the skills from that that we can then transfer into other sports. It might be volleyball that you use, it might be a range of other sports where you have to do this as a motion. There's that Scottish spot, I can't think what it is now, but you've got a log and you've got to kind of lift it up and the idea is that the log turns over in the air. So all of these sports that we do, the tennis one might actually look a little bit like badminton. So again, transfer of learning is really important. It doesn't have to look exactly like the sport for you to learn the skills of that sport. Last 10 seconds, bend your knees to add extra power. And well done guys, good stuff. We're going to tick off. Volleyball, that's done. The next one we're going to have a look at is baseball. And in baseball, a little bit like softball, you've usually got four people on each basis. It's a little bit like rounders. And usually somebody throws the ball at you, you've got to hit the ball back so that it goes out into the field and then it's your job to run around the diamond and back to the start. In this bit, we're not going to worry too much about the running around the diamond. We're not going to worry about the bowling either. The only thing we're interested in is the batting because we're working on striking games. So this time, all that's going to happen is you're going to serve the ball up to yourself. You're going to start with your hand by your side. And as the ball comes up, we're then going to hit the ball so that it hopefully strikes the wall and then comes back to us. I'd like you to imagine that you've got a desk or a tabletop full of stuff and you want to move it all off really quickly. So rather than taking each item, you're just going to move it all across together so that everything flies off the kitchen work surface. And that's going to be the batting action that we use. So I'm going to try it with my left hand. All I'm going to do is throw the ball up and then hit it against the wall and hopefully try and catch. That's how you play it on your own. Again, if you're playing with a partner, it's the same game. You're going to throw up, try and hit it to your partner for them to catch so that then they can get the ball and then hit it back to you. Three minutes, off we go. If you get the chance as well, practice with your right hand and your left hand. We'll need these because at the end we're gonna play a competitive game. This is our baseball. Again, you might try it with a piece of paper as well. That will bounce a lot further. As you get good at this game, you can start adding a twist of the body in to give yourself even more power. We've spoken about that in other weeks as well. We can add in extra powers by twisting or bending. It depends. If my arm is going from here to here, I can make more power by adding in a twist in the same motion. If I want to add more power by hitting the ball up, I can bend my knees so that my body moves up and down as well. So to create more power, I can simply turn and then as I unravel my body, my arm comes round and strikes as well. Oops. Yes. So we can add a lot more power onto our shots. I find it much easier on my right hand because I'm right-handed. Some of us that are really good, you might be able to put actually quite a lot of power onto your shot so it bounces back to you. If you're playing with a partner, the clue's in the title. You are playing with your partner. You're not trying to hit it at them. You're trying to hit the ball to them so that they can catch and then return the ball back to you as well. We're going to play just for one more minute. These times go pretty quick. Keep bending my knees, but my movement should be on the lateral movement. Striking the ball against the wall and back. Again, this could be used for moves that we have in baseball. It could be used in softball. It could be used in rounders. It could be if you're getting involved in some other sports like boxing. Instead of it just being a slap, it's going to be a little bit higher up and it's going to be a punch. Obviously, we only do that when we're playing competitive sports. So again, we have our transfer of learning where we're trying out 
different activities. Some of them might look a little bit like sports, which is what we've got here. Last 30 seconds. A couple more on each side. And then we'll move on. See if we can fit in three more with quality. One, two, three. Good stuff guys, well done. Grab yourself a really quick drink because we've done our top three. If you have any pieces of paper that are on the floor, now's a fantastic time to pick them up safely. One minute, do it safely, off you go. We always make sure we have a drink when they get the opportunity as well because it is quite warm. <clears throat> 30 seconds left to get yourself ready. Ooh, got it. Right guys, break time over. The next activity we're going to do, once I tick this one off, we've done baseball. We've done it well, so we deserve to tick it off. We're now gonna look at boxing. With the boxing, we're gonna look at two different types of punches. The first punch is the jab, and the second punch is called the straight. This is probably the most difficult activity we're going to do. Usually we save it for last, but this time we've brought it just a little bit further forward so that we've got more time to practice it. So here's what you're going to do. Much like the tennis serve, you're going to position yourself sideways onto the wall. Not facing it, not sideways, <clears throat> but sideways on kind of 45 degree. So you're half facing it, half not facing it. All you're then going to do is with your front hand, you're going to hold, throw it up in front of you, and when you do, with the same hand, you're just going to punch the ball forward. So hopefully, it should look a little something like that. It's going to be much more difficult than we have done it in other sports, because in our other sporting examples, we've had an open hand, and that takes up quite a large amount of space. When we clench it into a fist, it's a much smaller area, and because it's a smaller area, it's going to be much more difficult to actually hit the ball. So, if you're playing on your own, the aim is to punch it against the wall so that you can catch it. If you're playing with a partner, the aim is to just punch the ball so that it goes to them, they catch it, they're going to throw it up, punch the ball to you, and then you catch it. We're going to go just for a minute and a half this time because this is just the jab before we go into what's known as the straight. So, jabbing, 90 seconds, off you go. Make sure as well we practice with both hands. I'm pretty good at jabbing with my right hand because I'm right-handed, but with my left hand it might be a little bit more tricky. But either way, like that's a great example, I'm going to try and get it to the wall. Or if my friend was here, I'd be able to hit it to my partner. Again, with a piece of paper, you'll find that the ball travels much further. Make sure that you have a go. Make sure that your partner has a go as well. And we're pushing it against the wall each time. If you're a little bit unsure, it's up to you what you do with your other hand. You don't have to do anything. I just prefer it up and ready. And with the hand, you're gonna start with it here, pretty close to where your shoulder is, just in front. And all you're going to do is straighten at your elbow. So it goes forward like that, and hopefully it should punch the ball in midair. Obviously, we don't punch other things like equipment, and we certainly don't punch other people. But in this game, you're allowed to punch the ball. That's okay. Last 10 seconds. Make sure you try with both hands. See if you can get the ball to your partner. Fantastic. Now, the second bit is going to do what we call the straight. And this time, instead of punching with our front hand, we're now going to punch with our backhand, and the backhand is simply the hand that's further behind. So all we're going to do this time, with the hand in front, is going to have the ball. You're going to throw it up in the air, 
and as it comes back down you're going to use your backhand to move forward and punch it. We want to try and punch forward in this example at head height if we can so there's enough height for it to bounce off the wall and then come back to us. So if I was using this hand I'm going to start with it back here. I'll show you on this side. I'm not left-handed but it's easier to see. So I'm going to start back here and as it comes up I'm just going to punch it forward just like that. So I'm going to throw it up, punch and then a catch. I can do it better with my right hand punch and then a catch. So the better your throw is, the easier it is to make the catch. Don't worry too much about the catching for now because we're not working on catching, we're working on striking. We've struck with an open hand across a range of different areas. We're now looking at striking using our hand when it's scrumpled up into a fist. So same game, throw the ball up, straight punch and that should hopefully hit the ball to your partner. Off you go. The ball will bounce off the wall at funny angles, which makes it difficult to catch. That's not something you need to worry about. Again, to add in extra power into your shot, we can always use that swinging motion. So rather than just throwing a punch from here, to add more power in, I might just twist my body slightly so that this time when the ball comes up and it's coming back down, I can twist my whole body to add in more power. Feels very unnatural doing it with my left hand because I'm not left handed. Last 30 seconds because again this is very tough so we'll just give it a little bit more time before we move on. Boxing when I'm punching with the back hand. amazing how simple it is with more dominant parts of your body compared to other parts like my left hand that I just don't use as much. And last one. Good stuff guys. Fantastic. We can now tick off. Whoo! Boxing we've done that one as well. Next up we're on to, we are making good time here. We are on cricket. So cricket, we're now we're going to use the lower half of our body. We're actually going to use our hands and arms, which is the upper half, but we're going to hit the ball from below the hips. So this is how the next one looks. We're going to stand sideways to the wall now. Not sideways on, but fully sideways. So it's my hip and my shoulder that's facing the wall. This time, I'm going to throw the ball up in front of me and I'm gonna hit the ball with my back hand at about knee height. And all I'm going to do is push the ball so that it hits the wall. And hopefully if it comes back, I should be able to catch it if my catching skills are up to scratch. If I show you from sideways on, it's important that we bend the knees here. So we're going to stand like that, hand down, we're going to bend the knees. I'm not gonna bend my back over, so I'm gonna keep my back quite straight. It should be like a straight line actually see a line there but on my back there should be a straight line as well but in order to get down it's going to be my knees that I bend. All you're going to do from here is just push the ball forwards. You can bend a lot if you want to, you might only bend a little bit, it's up to you. So it might be a full-on squat, it might be standing up straight, it's entirely up to you. It might look a little bit like cricket but it doesn't have to look like it exactly. And as always if you're playing a partner the aim is to throw the ball up to yourself and pass the ball to your partner. Three minutes, make sure you practice on both hands. Let's go. This one's a lot easier than the boxing. We're using a larger part of our body. The ball is always nice and close to our body at all time. With the boxing, it was up and in front of us, whereas here, it's very close to what we call the midline, the center of the body. Again, if you want to add in more power, we can slightly start twisting our hips a little bit from here to there, and that will add in more power. I'm gonna turn my back on you for a moment. I'm not being rude. I'm just making sure I'm gonna practice with my right hand as well. I'm only gonna do a couple of these because I'm already quite good with my right hand. One more. 
Fantastic, I'm back on this side again. If you can throw it to your partner, that's great. If your partner can't quite catch it, you might hit it just a little bit softer so that it's easier for them. If they are catching it, you might just test them a little bit by hitting it a little bit harder. But as always, we make sure that we stay safe. One minute left on the cricket one. And then we're going to move on to our penultimate one. Our ultimate one even. The final activity, which is going to be football. Which again, is one of my favourites. I've played football for a long time. It's something that I really enjoy. And it's helpful because then I get to use different parts of the body as well. I get to use my hands and my feet. Let's go with 10 more hits. Five for you, five for your partner. After this one, we'll have a quick break so that we can pick up all the things that are on the floor. So I know during the boxing one, a lot of things did go on the floor and that's fine. We're here to practice, to learn and to get even better than we already are. Fantastic, great. Take the next minute to go and grab the bits and pieces that may be on the floor. I know I've got several balls and several pieces of socks that are there right now. So I'm going to pick those up if I can find them. There's a couple there. One here. And I'm sure there was one over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Ah, I found it. And of course, grab yourself a drink because what we're doing is quite tiring and it's important that we stay hydrated as well. Excellent. The final activity we're going to do is football. Because we're working on striking games, it might not look like football exactly, but hopefully we can use those skills in football and other sports that involve using the bottom half of your body, such as rugby. So I'm going to show you one player mode and two player mode as we always do. Player one mode where it's just you on your own. Again, you just need a wall and all you're going to do is drop the ball and as it falls to the floor, you're going to kick it so that it hits the wall and hopefully it should come back to you. It's very, very tricky. There we go. If you can catch it, that's great. If you can't catch it, don't worry about it. It's not a catching session. We're working on striking the ball. Now, if you've got a partner, you're going to play it slightly differently. Again, you're going to drop the ball. This time when you kick it, you're going to try and kick it to your partner so that they can catch the ball. And once they do that, they're then going to drop the ball and kick it as well. And the aim of the game is to kick the ball to your partner, not at your partner, to your partner as many times as you can. We're going to play this for three minutes. I'm going to play along with you. Go. Oops. This is very tough. If you're finding it too difficult, like I am at the moment, you might get a little bit closer to the wall. Obviously, we don't want to be kicking the wall, but we get closer so that it's a little bit easier to catch. Something else that might help you as well is if you're struggling, you might choose to stand just on one leg and then use the other one just to swing it forward and kick it. It's up to you how you do it. Once you get comfortable with it, again, you might try and use your other foot. My left foot is nowhere near as good as my right, but sometimes we might get a little bit of success. Sometimes we might fail, but it doesn't really matter because your brain learns from it each time. So if you're in the classroom at the moment, you might have got the ball to your partner three or four times. You might have got the ball to your partner 10 times. You might have got the ball to your partner zero times. It doesn't matter because your brain learns each time we kick the ball. Obviously, if you're at home, make sure that you're playing in a nice safe area. I've got a wall that's set up here. There's nothing in the way at all. So it's an activity that I know I can do very safely. We're going to practice for one more minute. And then we're going to play a competitive game, a competitive version. And I'm going to give you a couple of options for the competitive game as well. With scrunched up pieces of paper, remember it is slightly more difficult.
last 10 seconds. Dropping the ball and kicking it against the wall. Again, we look at transferability here. We're not just looking at kicking the ball. We're looking at timing of the swing. We're looking at dropping the ball. We're looking at coordinating different parts of our body. We're looking at trial and error. We'll try out a few things that don't quite work. And after a while, we'll get into a routine whereby we're making lots of catches. And hold it there, guys. We're halfway through the lesson now. Grab yourself a quick drink and make sure that you pick up all the items on the floor as well so that the floor is nice and safe. And also we can use them during the next round, which is gonna be a competitive version. And all we mean by competitive is we're going to be playing against each other instead of with each other. So I'll see you in one minute. That water is very, very cold. It's straight out of the cold water tap. It's lovely. There should be one more ball somewhere. I can't find it. If you can't find yours, don't worry about it. You can always get a new ball from the scrap paper drawer. We always make sure we recycle when we get the chance. Aha, got it. Last 30 seconds. I'm just going to keep on each of the ticks, but we might have to add a second one to it. If you're ready, you can take a few deep breaths. I don't know where you guys are at school, but it's certainly very warm where I am. I'm just going to take another quick drink and then we'll get on with it. So, next activity. <clears throat> We're going to be doing tennis, and this time you're going to be playing against your partner. So teachers, you've got two options, and obviously you pick whichever is safest for you and your class, given the ability of the class, how sensible they are, and also the amount of playing space that you've got available. So, option one. Option one, you're going to play the game where your partner now throws the ball to you. You aim to hit the ball using our tennis hits, somewhere in the room. Once the ball has stopped rolling, the person who threw the ball, the bowler or the server, is then going to get the ball. If it takes them one, two, three steps to reach the ball, then the person who hit it scores three points. If it took them seven steps to catch the ball, uh, to get to the ball, then the person who hit it scored seven points. If the person who threw it gets the ball hit and then catches it, so i.e. catches them out, then the server scores one point. So you've got two roles here. You've got the server and the striker. So the server, however many steps it takes to get to the ball after the striker's hit the ball. That's option one. If you've got a little bit more room available, you're going to do it slightly differently. The server is going to throw the ball. The striker is going to hit the ball. And now it's a race against time. For every second that the striker counts up to, that's how many points they get. So for example, I hit the ball and then I start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I might stop on eleven if the server gets to the ball at eleven. And that would just mean that my score is eleven. So you've got a couple of choices there. If you're playing the game on your own, we're going to do it slightly differently. The aim of the game is to either pick one specific area on the wall and you're going to aim to hit that area as many times as you can. Or option B, you're going to try and make your serve or your strike hit the wall and then come back as many times as you can in a row. Either way, we're going to play for just three minutes. I'll give the teacher some time to make that decision and start when you're ready. I'm playing on my own, so I'm aiming to catch the ball, but I'm also aiming to hit the same piece of wall. I've only done it once so far. That's twice. That's three times. Again, if you're playing with a partner, you can also play against them if the space is safe. If it's not safe, then you can carry on playing the games that you played before when you're playing with each other, aiming to hit the ball to your partner. We're just going to play for another minute and then the server and the striker will swap over. 
Remember, the server's job is to throw the ball to the striker. The striker's job is to hit the ball or to strike the ball. And then it's up to you. It could be that you count as quick as you can while the server tries to get the ball, or it could be the amount of steps that the server has to take in order to reach the ball that's the points total. It's entirely up to you, it's up to your class. You'll know your kids far better than I ever will. If you're in the hall or you're working with slightly older children, upper key stage one, then you might be in a position where actually you can play more competitive games, or you might even get some more people of the class involved, a two versus two, for example. Just gonna practice on my right hand again. Make sure you swap over now, striker, swap with the server, server, swap with the striker. Remember, if you're a server, it's you that has the ball that then throws it up for your partner to try and hit. You don't have to play for points, of course. You could play that whoever hits the ball furthest. You could have a target that you're aiming for. I mean, for me, I'm aiming at parts of the wall, but it could be if you're playing in the classroom, there might be a certain area that you want to get it in. It might be the waste paper packet. If you're in the hole, it might be a hoop. Again, the possibilities aren't endless, but they're very, very fast. So there's a lot of different options that we have. Last 30 seconds. And then we're really gonna to have to start flying through a lot of these activities. Oops, setting my alarm for three in the morning. That's no good. I'll wake up mega grumpy. Let's get a couple more hits. And time's up. Well done guys, we can tick another one off. Next one we're going to do is volleyball. The rules are exactly the same. If you're playing on your own, you're aiming to hit a certain part of the wall, even better if you can catch it. If you're playing against a teammate, the idea is to hit it far away. Every step they take is worth a point or for every number that you consecutively count to is worth a point as well. Either way, you're going to play 90 seconds as the server, play 90 seconds as the striker, and then we'll move on to our next activity because we've still got quite a lot to get through. Three minutes in total, let's go. If you're not sure what the volleyball one is, I'm here to help. We can use our knees, straighten them, and then we move our hands forward all in a motion to push the ball or the scrunched up sock nice and far forward. So hopefully hitting the wall and then coming back. If you can catch it, great. If you can't catch it, that's fine as well. We're working on striking, Whoop. not catching. Oh, that was a rubbish one, but it's okay because every time you fail, your brain learns from it. After 90 seconds, we'll swap over. I'll save you a job and I'll let you know when that is. Hopefully by now, we'll start getting the hang of some of these movements, even if we can't do them proficiently. For some of the children, this will be an entirely new movement pathway that they're doing. Remember, they have to bend their legs, they have to move their arm, they need to watch where the ball's going as well. So actually, there's an awful lot going on at the same time. So well done for you guys, giving it a go and sticking in with it, because I know that it's very difficult. Again, if the ball hits the floor, that's fine. If you're the server, now swap with the striker, so the server has the ball. And if you're the striker, swap with the server. So now the server has the ball, they're going to throw it up, and the striker is going to aim to hit the ball. Obviously, when we do this, we want to make sure that it's safe. We're not aiming for the roof. It's down to the teacher's discretion. You can always play with each other where the aim is to hit it back to your partner. If you're in a bit of a larger space, then you might play the competitive version where you try and get points against your partner. And obviously, the team with the most points is the winner. It's a competitive element that some of the children might be ready for. And there are certainly some children that are in a higher key stage one. So for example, those children in year two might well be ready for these kind of activities. For you guys that are a little bit younger, that are four, maybe five years old, it might be enough just to be able to sit down and hit the ball 
in the direction of the wall. Oops. Last 30 seconds and we'll move on to the baseball one. Baseball one is really good fun playing with your partner. Whew. As always, we talk about transfer of learning. Here we've got loads of coordination. And that means using different parts of your body together to achieve a goal. In this case, I'm using my knees, I'm using my arms, I'm using my hands, I'm using my head and my eyes to see the ball. And I'm doing all that coordinated together to achieve the outcome, which is hitting the ball and hopefully having it bounce back somewhere close to me. Okay, time's up. We can tick off volleyball. And next up is baseball. So again, you can either play it on your own, aiming to hit one certain part of the wall and then catching it. Or if you're playing with a partner, again, you can serve the ball to your partner and your partner's going to hit the ball. And the aim is again, steps to get the ball or the number of seconds that it takes is the uh, striker's score. So we'll fly through it again, three minutes. Off we go. I'll let you know when to swap over if you're playing with a partner. So each time, if we think back to our throwing lessons, our catching lessons, each time we have our eyes on the ball. I'm not looking where it's going to go at the moment, or I'm looking at where the ball is, and then I can coordinate my other hand to sweep across and to hit the ball. Remember, the action might be similar to having a work surface full of stuff, and you're wiping it all off away. There's loads of toys on your bed and you're quickly moving them all across at once. That's the motion that we're doing. And of course, you can add in more of a twist, which will give you even more power. I'm not going to do it too hard because I don't want to upset my neighbour that lives next door. And plus, I'm not aiming for power. I'm aiming to get it in the same part of the wall over and over again. If it's not quite working, I might need to change things out. A trial and error. 10 more seconds left before partner and striker, sorry, server and striker change over. Get ready, you've maybe got time for one more hit. And when you're ready, the striker and the server change over. If you've been practicing with just one hand so far, now's a great time to start practicing with the other hand. You'll tend to notice that one hand is slightly better than the other. So we're going to keep working through this. Just over one minute remaining. I'm getting a quick drink because I am very warm. <laughs> Again, we practice, we get better. It's almost like a computer game. We're gaining experience, we're gaining XP. And that helps us to level up. Or in this case, we're going to do a skill better and better and better. And it might be that you never end up playing baseball, but there are certain movements that are very, very handy. Last 10 seconds. I'm going to do it this way so I'm facing you. I always feel rude when I turn my back on the camera. It's not a very nice thing to turn your back on somebody. I've got an excuse because I'm doing skills, but even then it still doesn't quite feel right. That's what we're working on at the moment. We're not working on sports, we're working on skills. Some of the skills will be able to be used across multiple different sports or physical activities. Right guys, we've done three in a row. So now it's time to go and grab yourself a drink before we move on to our final three games. You might use this time as well to have a conversation with your partner, find out who's got the biggest score. You might share techniques, you might share different ideas. You might have a conversation with somebody who's doing really well and maybe magpie some of their ideas, that's allowed. It's nice when we share ideas because that then helps other people to learn as well. Last 30 seconds and then we'll go into our boxing one. And when we do the boxing, you've got a choice. You can either just do the jab, which is the one where the hand at the front does the movement, or you can do what is the straight, where your hand at the back is doing the forward movement. So you can either go jab, or better than that, hopefully, 
a straight. Last 10 seconds, as always, you either play with to yourself, aiming to hit the same spot on the wall, or if you want, you can play the game where you throw up the ball to your partner and your partner then hits the ball, hoping to try and get it as far away from you as possible. Same point scoring system as before, 90 seconds each, off we go. If you want, you can change your stance as well. It's up to you how you do it. Either way, we're practicing all these transferable skills. And obviously this is what it should look like at primary school. We shouldn't necessarily be focusing on just the sports. We can use sports as a vehicle to teach those skills. So at the moment we're using boxing as a vehicle to teach coordination, certainly throwing skills in there as well and catching. But we shouldn't be practicing football just for the sake of doing football. That's why we have after school clubs. That's why we have break times, lunch times. That's why we have weekends. That's why we have before school clubs as well, like some breakfast clubs. That's why we have clubs on the weekend that play. Loads of football clubs around your area. So that's why we do it. What we don't do is sacrifice PE lessons for sport. It's a very common misconception. The main focus of PE should be helping children to get a, a broad range of skills that they can then apply to various situations, multiple sports, or it might just be other activities. It might be that they end up taking rock climbing up as a, as a hobby. It might be that they just generally want to stay fit and active in life, in which case all these fundamental movements will help them do that and engage in a variety of different um, activities. That's 90 seconds up on the dot, so the server is now becoming the catcher. No, it isn't. No, the server is now becoming the striker and the striker is now becoming the server. Another 90 seconds, off you go. Make sure you try and use both hands as well. wrong with sport at all it's a very very valuable tool we can also use it to teach traits such as winning and losing very important honesty fair play being able to follow rules very very important skills but obviously if they are modified we can't be playing 7v7 with year sixes because the reality is the children are going to spend much time touching the ball you need to make sure that we're focusing mainly on skills so that they can practice in their own free time. Anyway, that's enough about my rant about PE versus sport. Last 20 seconds, see if you can outscore your partner. If you can, great. If you can't, great. Doesn't matter, we're developing skills at the moment. Ooh, that was a wild one. And time's up, well worked. We should be getting quite hot and sweaty at this point. You're all working really well. The penultimate one is going to be cricket. So you're going to throw the ball to your partner. Your partner is going to be bent down. And as you throw the ball to them, they're going to aim to hit it. Same scoring system as before. If you're playing on your own, as always, we aim to hit the same part of the wall. It's a bonus if you can catch it. 90 seconds, off you go. You might think of yourself a little bit like a bear here. You're like a bear with a big bear paw and you can see a fish swimming in the lake and you're gonna take a big swipe to get it out of the lake. An image of a bear and some salmon comes to mind. So this might look a little bit like cricket. It doesn't look too dissimilar from table tennis. We've got the ball and we're just serving as we would in table spinis from table tennis. Backspin did me there. And as always, we play with both hands. If you really want to test yourself, there's nothing wrong with throwing the ball up and trying to hit it with your backhand instead. That's okay. It's almost like a tennis backhand. Again, the sports will vary.
10 seconds till we swap over, see if you can get in one more hit for your partner to get. If you can hit the same part of the wall, that's great. If you can't, don't worry about it. And if you're the server, swap with the striker. If you are the striker, swap with the server. We're only gonna play for about five more minutes in total. 90 more seconds left on this, off you go. I can do it with my right hand quite easily, so I'm gonna stick with my left. My left is the one, clearly, that needs a little bit more improvement. If you're playing in the classroom as well, feel free to add in some extra rules if you need to. If you're the teacher and you can see an opportunity so for some extra rules to be put in that would help support their learning, then definitely make sure that you do that. You know what your classroom looks like. You know how well the children are doing. Some of them are doing fantastic. Some of them might kind of not be quite as experienced yet. And again, we can always differentiate by making the game easier by standing much closer to the wall. And again, you don't have to catch it. It's just a bonus if you do. Last 30 seconds before we move on to our final activity. Bear swiping that salmon out of the water. It's a little bit like a badminton serve this as well if I was to serve underarm. Last five seconds, see if you can get one more hit in. And good stuff, time's up. We're moving on to now our final activity, which is Football, we're gonna spend just one minute now for the server, one minute for the striker because we're going to be out of time very soon. So all you're going to do is throw your ball up for the, serve, uh, for the striker. The striker is then going to kick the ball nice and safely so that it goes somewhere in the classroom. If the classroom again isn't safe, make sure you play cooperatively where you're just passing the ball to your partner using your feet. Conversely, if you're playing on your own, again, hit the ball so it's hitting a particular part of the wall every time. We're trying to increase our accuracy with both our left and our right foot. Two minutes in total. I'll tell you when to switch over if you're the server and the striker. Off we go. I didn't collect all the stuff off the floor, so I've got a few bits and pieces all over the place at the moment. That said, I'm gonna make it easy for myself by getting a little bit closer and keeping my eye on the ball the whole time. That should make things a little bit easier. Well done everybody that's working at home. I know it's difficult, so well done if you've made it this far. It is very tough, we're doing physical activity, wrapped up in physical education. We've been doing this for about an hour now, not far off, approaching 55 minutes. It is quite difficult, it is very demanding, so as always, we'll finish five minutes early. So you've got plenty of time to grab yourself a drink and you've got time to go to the toilet if you need to. Some of you, this is the slot straight after dinner as well. And swap over, server swap with the striker and the striker swap with the server. Last 60 seconds of today, off we go. I know you're all working really hard. Hopefully we've managed to get out on lunchtime today. I know the weather's been quite nice in Leeds. Apparently there's going to be lots of rain tomorrow. If that's the case and you fancy tuning in again, then feel free to either tune in or watch this on repeat. Both are available. I'll be doing another activity, another set of activities tomorrow. It'll be the same ones as these, but tweaked slightly. So obviously we're working with an older group, we're working key stage two. Last five seconds for today. Four, three, two, one. And time is up. Whew. Really well worked everybody, fantastic. We've looked at a range of different skills that we could have used today, all tying into various different sports. So regardless of whether it's sports, physical activity, or just a range of fun games that you might want to play when you grow up. Hopefully these will have helped join them all together. Fantastic stuff, thank you everybody. 
stay active, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye and take care.